Welcome back to the run-up. Well, the presidential election tribunal has restrained the commission, that's the INEC, from tampering with all sensitive materials, including the beavers used in the conduct of the presidential election. Following the request by the candidates of the PDP and the Labour Party, Atiku Abubakar and Peter Obi, respectively, who rejected the outcome of the presidential election. The Court of Appeal in Abuja on Wednesday granted INEC permission to reconfigure the bimodal voter accreditation system machines used for the 25th February presidential and national assembly elections across the country. The panel, however, ordered the Independent National Electoral Commission to upload the data on the Beavers machines to the back end server and make certified true copies of the data to the respondents. The opposition candidates who came second and third respectively rejected the emergence of the APC candidate Bola Tinubu as winner of the election and called for the conduct of another round of elections or be declared the winner. Well, joining us to discuss this is Uthman Isa Tochiku. He's a legal practitioner. Thank you, Uthman, for joining us. Thank you very much for having me, Maureen. All right, so Uthman, first of all, how surprised were you when you heard about uh, the postponement of the governorship election? Um, uh, thank you very much for having me. Um, I, I, I don't think I was actually surprised that the Saturday election uh, was going to be postponed, even though it is um, not proper to... Uh, preempts the outcome of the proceedings of court in the circumstance. This is because under Section 24 of the Electoral Act, specifically in Section 24 sub 2 of the Electoral Act, um, it has provided that INET have the right under some, you know, certain um, emergencies or exigencies, as the case may be, to postpone any, any election as the case may be in the country, and then fix another date to conduct such election. So in that vein, I wasn't actually surprised that the postponement was going to come, looking at the facts of what um, was facing INEC at the time. You could recall that they were in court for them to be uh, granted leave to reconfigure the beavers ahead of the, the election. Mm -hmm. And that order quite actually came late so it is enough for them to rely in the circumstance to say that um, they want to postpone the election. So long as the law has given them that latitude to so do, um, I wasn't actually surprised that it was going to come. Yeah, you've alluded to the fact that that request from INET came late. Um, do you read anything to that coming late, you know, that request from INEC coming at the time it did just few days to the governorship election. How suspicious does that appear to you? Um, I, I don't think it actually appears suspicious in any way. Um, let us not teach to uh, public sentiment and um, uh, public opinion when we raise some of these issues. These are issues of facts and data and you know that uh, in data management, there's what is called backup, right, and restore. So under backup and restore in data management, it is understandable that even if INEC had gone to reconfigure the beavers, it has no effect whatsoever to the previous election that had been had that is about to be contested in court. It's not going to temper with any evidence as far as that particular um, issue that has to deal with um, back up and restore is concerned. And the court had also instructed that they must have to do that back up in order to avail some of those parties who are agreed with the outcome of the initial election to be able to have access to some of uh, the document that will aid their, their plea in court. So with that being in mind, I, I do not think there's any suspicion whatsoever. It's just um, the public outcry, right, for INEC, you know, making a move to reconfigure the beavers, the thoughts that is going to affect the evidence that was used to conduct the presidential, the presidential um, election. But if you look at it from the professional perspective, i.e., I'm talking about um, now keeping data and all of that, mm. it doesn't have it doesn't have any effect whatsoever. It doesn't have any effect. 
All right. When the opposition parties, the candidates, uh, request to inspect these machines, what more do you think they're looking for besides the results that are there? Because clearly it does seem that it's not just the results that they want to see. What else do you think they could be looking for? We are still on the run-up, and our guest is Uthman Isato Chukwu, legal practitioner, joining us to take a look at the postponement of the governorship election and all that's happening around that and the just-concluded presidential election plus the forthcoming uh, governorship election that couldn't hold. Usman, sorry we couldn't continue our conversation smoothly as we had hoped to would, but no, let's continue from where we stopped. Well. I was asking, if it were just the, as simple as them having access to the results, would they have gone to court to seek for uh, inspection, you know, authority to inspect these uh, machines, or is there something more that they're looking for aside from the uploaded results? Um, yes, the law provides that um, in order to have access to a public document kept in a public institution, right, you need, um, you need um, a legal order from courts to be able to assess such a document, especially when it has to deal with document that will support your case. And you know, before what emanated that um, particular intention to assess some of those um, documents was as a result of the election that was conducted on Saturday, that mm -hmm. presidential election. And then INEC is going to be joined as a party to come and explain and give their own facts as with regards to the outcome of the election. And in that vein, you don't expect that INEC will just willingly give out access to some of those documents, even though it is a public document. So the ideal thing to do was for the applicants, i.e. some of those uh, parties who, are, who were aggrieved with the outcome of the election, to go to court to seek for an order of court to give them, to grant them that leave or permission to say, right, to mm -hmm. allow INEC uh, give them access to, to some of those um, uh, documents. So it is the right thing to, to have done, and that's what actually um, happened. Well, with all the controversies thrown up uh, by that uh, election and the litigations and all that, would it be correct to say that INEC probably was hasty in declaring a winner? Um, I, I don't think that is correct, because if you, if you had gone through that electoral process, you would understand that it took about um, three to four days thereabouts to declare this um, election. Election was held on Saturday, and I think it took um, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday before results was announced. I, I, I didn't think INET was in a case, but um, I wouldn't also say that the process was not mad with um, lots of irregularities, and that is what um, animated some of these grievances that has prepared some of these um, uh, candidates to go to court to contest um, the outcome of the elections. Um, INEC worked within the, um, their timeline and also within their timetable. But of course, um, um, the election is not um, satisfactory to the citizens of this country. And myself, too, I have my own personal reservations with the process you know, that characterize the election. And in all of that, all we have to do is to submit all our grievances to court. Since the matter is now, um, is now going to be distilled in court, we should all wait and see how the court is going to determine the issue, and then we'll all um, learn from the outcome. Okay, well, the forthcoming uh, election, that's the governorship, has just been postponed. Um, what's the import of this postponement on the election, would you say? Well, there is, there is no import. It's just for the various can. In fact, it has given a, an opportunity for some of the candidates, you know, to go home and um, reorganize themselves and then do one or two more campaigns before uh, Upper Week Saturday, which is uh, on the 18th of March, 2023. So I, I, I think it's to the advantage of some of those candidates because some persons are not even ready. Like yesterday, I was in court for a pre-election matter. My, my uh, client was supposed to be one of the contestants on Saturday. 
His name was omitted, and we got an order of court and serve on INEC to include his name to contest the election on Saturday. When this, when this um, court order had not, um, when this postponement uh, date had not been issued by INEC. So you can imagine with him that we're just left with two days or 48 hours to conduct his, um, um, his campaign. He would be left with another more seven to eight days, you know, to campaign before the 18th. So you can see with the advent of this postponement is to his advantage. So I, I, I think he's more of advantage to the contestants than it is of disadvantage to them. All right, we've had repeated uh, series of hiccups uh, marring uh, electoral processes in this country. And here we are today with all of these controversies trailing this just concluded presidential election. I wonder, why do we keep getting it wrong with our electoral processes? Um, I, I think I, I would agree with you in part right that we are getting it uh, we're not getting it too correct in our electoral process but not always getting it wrong i think that will not speak well for um, our country we are a nascent democracy and um, as such we are still growing we should not also um, be unmindful of the fact that uh, nigeria is uh, working in progress and Okay. <laughs> he was just going to say that Nigeria is still a work in progress. Um, yes, yes. All right, um, good. And, and um, that being said, that being said, we, we will continue to develop our electoral process. And, and as you can see, the beavers were just tested for the first time in our electoral history. And we could see for sure, even though the elections to some you know, large extent was mad with irregularities. We cannot also shy away from the development that the beavers has brought in our electoral process. There are some states that um, since inception of that state has been ruled by one political party. And then we could see the emergence of other political party taking over and disrupting the, the status quo in some of those states. These are issues that we cannot also shy away with when we criticize the bad side of of uh, the, the election. A national test run of these machines, do you think? Because when we had uh, the Oshu election, and then there were issues that were thrown up from that, um, some of us were a bit cautious with our excitement about the beavers, and we thought, uh, but then some uh, lawyers explained to us that the beavers saved the day in that election, that the beavers actually did show that it could be uh, relied upon to help the process. However, with the just concluded election, we've discovered that it just, well, didn't go as we had hoped it would go. Are you of the opinion, as some have uh, postulated, that not, there should have been a national test run of these machines before the elections? Yeah, I, I share that opinion, actually, that there should have been um, a national test run, because at least if you are using anything for the first time, it deserves to be test run, especially when it has to serve about 200 million Nigerians. So, and this is about national election for that matter. And I think that is why INEC wants to learn from its mistake by saying they should be allowed to reconfigure this in order not to repeat what had happened during the presidential election, although that's not an excuse to, for INEC, I'm not holding brief for them. But it is important to, for us to understand that we are using this thing for the first time in our election, and we should um, we should not shy away that we will experience some of these irregularities. But at least to a very uh, minimal extent, but not to this um, you know porous extent that had you know landed us into this um, uh, trouble. But another thing is that the law had also provided support for some of these things, right? Even if you even if you get it all correct, there will still be that uh, some persons who will show grievances with the outcome. And then that's why the, the court is there for them to go and table their issue before the court and let the court determine how the process went. So I, I, at this point, I would say that, yes, it, it would have been subjected to national test run, but in the absence of that and the outcome had happened, then the, the only refuge is for the aggrieved candidates to seek redress before the court.
Yeah. Well, you know, one could easily say, look, the elections have taken place. Let's just move on. But then it becomes imperative to, because if we're going to forestall a repeat of an ugly history, we must fix it. So that by next four years, when we go back to the polls, we will not be here again discussing some of these glitches that um, have continued to plague the electoral process in the country. However, this another um, another thing that could go wrong from this postponement of the governorship election is the fact that it could create more voter apathy. Do you yeah, share it's, that? It's thought? one of those. It's one of those consequences, actually, that the postponement had caused the voter apathy aspect of it. And it will be very sad and it will not be um, good for our electoral system and our elections, too. Um, you see, when you talk about some people saying that if you had lose election, you should just relax and let it go. I, I don't think it's the idea thing to, to do in a democracy. I, I mean, we we'll operate a constitutional democracy. And in a constitutional democracy, it allows every individual, you know, to express themselves in terms of the, their rights that have been guaranteed under the constitution. And some of those rights can only be expressed by, you know, approaching the courts to lay your grievances. If you are not happy with the outcome of the process, I don't think it will be fair for anybody to tell you to go home and relax. If you feel you have some overwhelming evidence that could convince the courts to tilt to your to your argument. Why not? The court has, the, the constitution has given you that right to go to court and demand for your right based on the facts presented before it. So I, I, I do not subscribe to the idea of election has come and gone. Those who have lost to them go home and relax. If they feel they have something substantial, I mean, our laws encourages that, that they should go to court and then present whatever they feel they have before the court and let the court hear them. Well, thank you so much, Utsman Isa Tochiku, for your time and insight on this very crucial matter. Have a thank great day. Thank you for day. having me. Well, we'll take a short break. We'll be back. Stay with us.